Hello everyone, I'm Zishan Shah and welcome to Z Interactive YouTube channel, your own training institute. So we will start with our first useful node, top useful node you can say, and that is the tile sampler. I like this node a lot and I use it uh, like very like quite often uh, like often and it's it's quite a really interesting uh node so let's start with it so let's create our new substance here and this time i will choose pbr metallic roughness and i'll just press uh okay here and this is what i will get and what i need here is i will take my height from here height color uh like node okay and then uh, what here i am going to do is that let's let's remove this one okay and i will press here on my so i'll go to space i will press space bar tile sampler okay and here i have the tile sampler now this type sampler i will plug it in the height also i will plug it in the ambient occlusion but this ambient occlusion uh, uniform i don't want so i will delete this one as well just like i deleted for the height but here i want the um, uh, the actual ambient occlusion so i will go spacebar ambient occlusion like what we did in the last uh, session here we go and i will put this here plug it here then metallic roughness i don't want to play with this but i do want to connect this to my uh normal map rest everything i will keep as it is i don't want to change anything here so now you can see that i am getting my tile sampler here okay now to better understand the tile sampler first thing we need to do is go to scene change it to Round it to cube okay next met materials default and we're going to get tessellation here okay and then we will move inside here and increase uh, decrease this one the zero value increase the tessellation factor to 16 and this one to 10 okay now we can go back here by double clicking so what is style sampler basically now tile sampler is basically a new form or like it was introduced later on before we uh, used to have tile generator so this is tile generator so this is the advanced version of the tile generator if you can work with the tile sampler if you will start working with a tile sampler exactly the same thing that tile generator have tile sampler have that too but it have some more extra stuff just like if you can work with tile sampler you can work with tile generator too so if you have little small projects or quick things you have you want to do so you will just use tile generator but you uh, we will start with tile sampler so because you know if you know how to work with this you can easily work with the tile generator too but most of often you will work with the tile sampler now in the instance parameter the first thing we have is the amount of the tilings that you have right now i have 16 by 16 16 here and 16 here i can reduce it and make it five by fives five on the top five on the bottom okay that's what i will have now I have here uh, no non-square expansion also and square expansion also that I usually don't play with it so you can keep it as it is then underneath that you have pattern now in the pattern let's close all this so we can go one by one to all of these now inside the pattern we have different sort of patterns we have pattern uh, input if you want your own pattern we have disk so you have paraboloid just like what we have in the shapes exactly those kind of stuff we have here okay so these kind of uh, stuff we have so let's choose the paraboloid for now so you can see that we have these sort of things okay now if i'll go back here in the background here or let's do one thing 
let's choose something like a square so we can play with the uh, rotation also now here we have a rotation and if I will choose it 90 uh, degrees or sorry 180 degrees so you can see that it will affect these uh, like like rotation option on the bottom okay like suppose if I start rotating this one these squares okay and change these value so it will just record it in my like rotation so when i will go to the rotation it will affect that but at this point i don't want to change anything uh, i will keep it as it is so this is basically for the rotation when you do that so once we will move there then you can uh, see now we'll go to size now in the size we have first thing is the mode so we have different modes here normal mode so if i will change the size of this so it will just change normally okay just like this and if you scale this up or down just like this okay and scale it oops sorry here you can scale it normally just like that but if you want uh, a different scale uh things like uh like mode like if you want to keep the uh the ratio so you can do that so it will uh, only, uh, keep the ratio and stuff okay and if you want to keep the absolute it will keep the everything absolute just like you can see that okay so absolute fixed so whatever you want okay so i will keep this uh, normal right now now size uh as i showed you before is the size of each one of these so you can change these okay apart from that you have size random so if i will change size random so you can see that how it is changing the size it's changing the size of the x value of randomly of some of these and y if I will do so randomly of like like some of these okay so this is normally I'm changing but if I want to keep the ratio same or something so I can keep the ratio here same or absolute I can keep it so you can see accordingly it it, it, it kind of changes okay so you can choose any sort of uh, these values like these options here okay so right now I don't want to keep the ratio or uh, absolute here so I will keep it as it is but if you want you don't want to ch change the, 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 the ratio or keep it absolute so you can change though now here this is overall scale okay that scale uh, random scale random this is overall okay let me reduce this back to zero 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 now if, uh, if you will see if I'm scaling it up is it scaling the whole thing okay my whole graph itself so if uh, like oh, my whole tile itself so if I will go here in the scale random so instead of uh, scaling all of them with the same size if you will do scale random so you will notice some of them becoming bigger and some of them are becoming smaller so it will randomly it will uh, attract this okay now here we have scale map multiplier now this will go just like this right now you will not see any effect now reason for uh, you will not see any effect because we don't have any scale map multiplier so for the scale map multiplier you will see here just like we have the base material we have here uh, these nodes too so for example if I will press space bar let's bring star now star itself is a shape so I will bring a star which is a pre-made shell uh, space, uh, like uh, like a shape so I can use this one okay and I will plug this into scale map input now let's go back here now let's do the scale uh, map multiplier right now like only this scale is affecting now if i will start scaling this up and before doing that let's do one thing let's make them 16 by 16 
the way they were so that we can see the result more clearly. Now, if I will go to the scale map, uh, map multiplier, this is the scale map, okay, that we have plugged it here. If I will start increasing this, just see what is happening here. Wherever I have this white area, okay, that is not changing the size, but whatever is black is changing the size. Okay. So you can have this sort of a result. Plus, if you want to blend it with the random, you can start increasing the randomness here. So you can have some bigger, some smaller, okay, some something like that. So you will have this, uh, the whole stuff. Okay. Now, uh, each one of these, like position, rotation, and color, have their own map multiplier, right? Position map multiplier, rotation map multiplier, color map multiplier. So that means you have to connect to all of them, okay? But what if you don't want to like, uh, like select all of them? And you need to use this for all. So we have one common one here, which is known as the vector map, okay? So how the vector map works, let's reduce this back, back. Now, here, I cannot take this and add to the vector map input because this is grayscale and this is color. So what we can do, we can go and we can connect and go in between and convert this in, and, and put the gradient map in between so it will become the, the color and then we will have this here. So once you apply that, so if you will do some sort of changes here, okay, so you will notice that it will start appearing. Uh, let me increase it. So it will start appearing in that form, okay. So I don't want to keep this one here. Let's keep it simple right now. So, so that you can go to the other part so you can see what others are doing i think 16 16 is too high let's make it 10 10. oops okay so that's all in the size now let's go to the position now position is basically by its name it's all about the position so the position we have here random so if i will move these so you can see randomly they are moving okay and if i will do the offset so they are moving from their own place and this is how we can uh, go in the size and we can increase the uh, like decrease the y axis here oops I'm changing this one. You can decrease the Y size here or and keep the the like X size which is horizontal or the same and Y uh, like a little bit and increase this. Oops. Let's change this to keep ratio or absolute. Okay. Oh, let's keep this. Okay. So now if you will go back here, so you will see offset is creating this brick sort of an effect here also, like it's, it's moving. Well, it, it depends on what do you have here. Maybe if uh, if I don't have here uh, in the pattern, maybe I can change it to disk. So I will have this sort of an effect, okay? Like if I will have a paraboloid, so I will have this sort of an effect. So it depends what you are using. So if I'm using a brick itself, okay, so I will have much more uh, like, like better result here because it will give me more uh, like a, 
pattern specific options here okay uh, apart from that pattern specific randomness it will give it to me then other stuff here so i can easily change uh, these and and move from the pattern and then here in the scaling options i have much more better way of changing this and offset and stuff like that and in the position you have uh, offset type horizontal then you have vertical if i will choose vertical so you can see it is now offsetting vertically then we have horizontal uh like global so horizontal global will act uh, will also activate the global uh, offset here as well okay vertical or horizontal so you can see that how what kind of results i'm getting here okay like globally the whole thing it is changing so i will keep it the quirkux okay and here i have displacement intensity now displacement intensity let's see that so here i have displacement map input i will plug this in now let's do one thing let's go to this uh, displacement map intensity and increase it and you can see that wherever i have that star shape it is moving that part like the white part is moving and the rest of the other part is keeping if i will go all the back way back here okay um, suppose something like this and start offsetting stuff so you can see how things are getting affected here like i can rotate my displacement like on the top here and then i can reduce the size of it or completely move it up or something like that so this is how your displacement will work if you have that here now let me remove this one from here and change everything to normal what it was before and here as well so size we are done position we are done now we will go to the rotation now what we will do is that i will start using the rotation map multiplier and as i will start increasing it you will notice that it is affecting only the area where i have the star okay so i can increase it suppose that here and then i can do rotation normal or stuff so it will accordingly it will work like that okay so this is how you can get the uh your shape but uh to better see it maybe you can go like uh let's do one thing let's increase this as many uh tilings uh, you will have it will be more understandable now you can see that clearly looks like it's the star shape that one that we have applied over there okay. so that's what we have here let's remove this okay. now let's go to color now inside the color we have map threshold uh mask map threshold okay then we have here pattern center and all these things so this is all about the colors here now if i will go and increase this one i will not get anything out of it okay but if i will take my output from here okay and i will put this inside the mask map input okay and then if i will start increasing you can see that it is affecting now only the mask area which is the star and rest are gone so now i can go anywhere here and start playing with it so this is this is the only thing that will be shown there okay so this is what the mask do and one more thing we can make it much more uh, understandable if i will go here and use blur high quality blur okay 
and then go here in the color or any mask that you have been using if I will start increasing this you can see that it is not affecting completely from the start because what it is doing is that it, it have now the blur value so it is taking that blur value also okay for example if I will go here on my uh, scale option and increase the scale so you can see that it is not affecting the whole thing just like it was doing before but now it is rather smoothly creating the effect because now we have this blur value which is giving us a smooth transition between black and white before it was harsh so we, will, we were getting a harsh result and now we are getting more smoother result okay so this is how you can uh, make some interesting stuff with this. Let's go back to color here. Now here in the color we have mask invert. Suppose if I go like, just like this and I, I don't want this mask to be uh, in this way. I want it other way around so I can invert the mask. So I will have this result then. So you can also invert the mask if you want. Then mask random. If I'll start increasing mask render, so it will take the same mask and from each and every, like you know, from like like different areas, it will start like uh more like vanishing things off, like disappearing, like things will start disappearing randomly. Okay, from random places. So we do have invert mask over here as well. So I don't, uh, this is for the render. I don't want to play with that. Now here I have blending mode, add, subtract, and mm, like maximum. And this is if you want, let's remove this one for now. This is if you want to put some color input here. Okay. And uh, at this stage, I don't have any sort of a color input. Let's put the color input here. Okay. And Let's do one thing here. Increase this more, 25, or maybe even more, 50. And here I will put uh, transform 2D. So press shift, put everything here. So we can have some smaller value without any sort of tiling oops okay now because we have much more blurry value like blurred value i will put this in the color map input i'll go back here and now, and now let's see what happens when we will use the color map input here so if you have the color map input here, so if I will in start increasing the color random value, so this is randomly uh, affecting my, the, the, like the whole thing, okay? Like taking out from here. But if I will use uh, scale, okay? And uh, it will start doing, sorry. So it is taking the color input here. But what if I, I would be using not this one, maybe using this, okay. So the result will be uh, will be same because I think randomly it is applying the color. It's not taking any color from these values here for now. So for other stuff, it, will, it might take it from there. Okay, so back. Here. Now we have here the color input. Let's re reduce the color uh, random here. Now if I will go to the color, uh, like because you know in the color random what you will get is that some of them will get affected, some of them will not get affected. So the heights uh, of some will be reduced, height of some will be increased. So it's a good way of making something just like this sort of a randomness. 
So I'll reduce this one. Now here I have the color the parameterization mode. So right now I have a color input, which is this image inside the color input. If I will increase this one, now you can see this is appearing. Okay. And just see how it is affecting here very smoothly. Okay. Because we have a lot of blur here. So that's why we are getting this sort of value here. What if I go here and increase the decrease the blur, make it look more believable like a star. So now you can see the, how the result is. But this uh, is something which I really uh, like. I use it a lot. Okay, and I really uh, like the effect of this. Now we have global opacity, so you can change the whole opacity of it or of the height so it would become lesser or more totally up to you now i was using in the color report i can use scale also okay so this will work with the scale value that you have up there or row index or column index or pattern index low uh, uh row index will give you if i will increase this one this sort of the gradient from top to bottom okay so you will have something like this Okay, so if I reduce this, you can see how the effect is working. Now, if I will use column index, so you, it will give you something like this. If you will use pattern index, it will give you something like this without that uh, pattern on the top. Okay, so this is how you can uh, do that. You can change these from the uh, from the like bottom as well. Okay, like. Uh, I can change from here okay and I can choose like any sort of a value here change around okay. Okay, so it's uh, it's totally up to you how you want to use this. Okay, this is all about the color. So let's do one thing here. Let's reset everything here in the size as well as in the color. Now here, let's remove all these for now. I have this uh, shape, okay? And let's put the shape in the pattern input one. Now what is the pattern input one? Let's see. So now I will go back to my tile sampler. And now instead of pattern, I will choose, uh, I, instead of brick, I will choose pattern input one. So when I will use pattern input one, it will give me this pattern here. The one that I chose, the star. Okay. This is how, how, like what I will get. And now the way I was working with the, all the others, I can work with the star as well. Okay. And you can go to the color. And you can do some kind of changes over here. Like oh, the one we were using. So... Can use the color, random color here some will be smaller some will be bigger or you can use uh, the scale mode of of this to make it uh, smaller or high like like less height or more height by changing this to height mode and maybe you can change the size of the actual one here okay so this is how you can get the colors here now 
it's not necessary that we can have only one pattern we can have more than one pattern so inside the pattern you will see there is a pattern input numbers so when you will change it to pattern input you can change this to also like i can make it two okay and i can maybe make it three up to you and now once you do that you will see pattern number one two and three before we only had one so now i can make another shape here and change this shape to disk make it smaller put this here and uh, this one okay in the pattern input one as uh, in the pattern input two then i can make another shape and make it square a little bit smaller and plug it this into the pattern input three now if i will go back here you can see that i have pattern input one two and three so i have different of them randomly uh like separated here so inside the pattern amount now you can all have all these ones and you have the pattern distribution random or in the pattern number pattern number means like first it will show pattern number one two three one two three one two three if you want to show that in that way this is also a very interesting way to show or distribution map so distribution map is basically uh you can make a map here okay uh where is the distribution map here is our business like distribution map so let's make a distribution map here let's take this one and put this in the and put it in the distribution map so now this is in the distribution map and you can see it is it, it is going to show in inside the distribution map and you can ch change the you know make it blurry or something like that let's put some blur between these two and uh, increase the intensity of this blur okay now inside the distribution uh map we have this so wherever there is white okay we will have nothing okay and wherever we will have a little bit grayish we will have uh circles and wherever wherever we have more darker colors so we will have stars so just like that you will have the distribution map so the first one uh, pattern map input will be in the darker area pattern map 2 will be in the, the middle level area pattern pattern map 3 will be in the brighter level area so that's how it will work here so i usually keep it random i enjoy working using random or if i have more so then maybe like pattern uh, like number so just the, this way then you have rotation now if you will do rotation random okay so you, now you can see it will start working before as you know it wasn't working because we were not working with the pattern input but now we are working in the pattern input so you can see that it is rotating okay so i have zero so let's turn it to zero means like it will work with our own rotation okay 180 degree all will be rated 180 degree okay now what else i can do here is that i can use symmetry random because everyone uh, everything is uh, like rotating in this direction so if i will start increasing this one so some will rotate in this direction some will rotate in the other direction so there will be no symmetry uh here so like it will be not not symmetrical change this to random completely so we can see the more or like better result here we can have 270 or we can have zero or we can have 180 so totally up to you for that okay now rest of the other things uh, will remain same if we will go to the color or we will go to the any other parts here so you can get the same same value here okay size same thing okay scale random or something like that let's do one thing let's go back to our color 
and instead of using the pattern center here oh, sorry the scale here use the color input or reset everything here So I don't want to use anything here. I'll reset all of it. Why I'm doing this? Just to make sure that uh, they are not the same as they were before. This is the way I will make sure they are exactly turned into uh, back to normal. Okay. So now they are normal. Now I can simply work with the size and other stuff here freely if I want. So you can see that working pretty fine so now things will work as uh, as we were like working before but now we do we don't have only one but we have three different uh, like pattern inputs so we will have more much more interesting results so what else you can do is that you can try putting these instead of for using these you can uh use oops sorry So instead of using uh, like normal or uh, like only shapes inside your scale map or other stuff, you can what you can do is that you can use different sort of noises and that will give you know much much more better uh, like result. Like suppose if I will put this noise in the scale map input, okay, and then if I will go to scale. So just notice what's like a very different sort of a uh, like result we will start getting here, okay? Based on what do we have here? So the area which is black or uh, blackish, we will get something that kind of result. And to like better uh, demonstrate this, we can put some uh, blur value or like levels maybe. Okay, so I can put some levels here just to show you around. Okay, so just notice wherever we have this black area, we have no scale going on there. Okay, and wherever we have these white area there where the scales is going on like happening. Okay, another way to see exactly what's going on, you can increase the number of your uh like like pattern input like amount six uh maybe we can increase it a lot maybe we can make it 50 by 50. okay so now you can clearly see how it looks like okay black area white area and if you zoom in so this is how it will look like so this is one more thing you can do to create and you can make those like kind of uh like like pins over here i mean something like like this sort of thing you can make with uh with this effect right kind of look like that so i hope you have liked this lesson and that's all for the style sampler and you can do a lot of things with the time sampler i really like this uh like node here so and i'm sure you will be waiting for the next lesson and uh, soon uh, like I will upload the next lesson too and I would like to thank you all for all your support and I, I hope you will continue to support me please subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed to it yet and I will be posting a lot of new content so don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can receive all those notification about those new content I will be uploading and if you have liked my video so please hit the like button and leave your question in the comment section below and I will surely answer them. In the end, I would like to mention that please don't download the videos, watch them online because all my hard work won't pay off like this. So please do support me. Always watch my videos online. So thanks once again, everyone. And soon we will meet in the next lesson. Take care of yourself. Take, uh, stay healthy and keep learning. There's one important announcement I would like to make. I have started three great membership plans on my channel. I have introduced ZDI Friends membership plan, which will give you exciting perks like loyalty badges and priority on comments. 
I have also introduced ZI Early Bird Plan, which will give access to Z Interactive tutorials way early before they become public. So you will get all these lessons at once and you can binge watch. Last but not the least, I have introduced ZI Premium Plan, which will give access to advanced professional tutorials, which you will find at very, very expensive outside. And I will be giving this at a very low amount of price. So visit my channel now and click on the join membership to get more information. I hope you become one of my members. If you want to learn how to create a highly detailed prop procedurally using Substance Designer, so this premium tutorial series is for you. Join my premium membership plan on YouTube and get access to all premium tutorials. In this tutorial series, I will demonstrate how to use Substance Designer along with simple geometry to create a realistic smashed up retro television. Oh, 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 oh,